Hey guys, today we're gonna do 2011 BMW 740i and uh, we're gonna replace the valve cover gasket in one video and in the second one, oil filter housing gaskets. First thing we gotta do is remove four, it's uh, I believe um, Allen key five millimeter bolts to just remove the cover. When you do that, remove the bolts and you have uh, the vacuum lines coming in here. So just uh, press on the bottom and disconnect. Okay. So just move those pins up a little bit and disconnect this line. Now we can move this cover off. Do is remove the engine air filter box. And there's multiple ways to do so. So you basically just take this one out. You have to remove this part, like which is uh, simply on the clips. And the air filter box itself, it's sitting on um, those just uh, clips type things. Remove the wires in here, closer, okay. like just going up. Nothing actually holds them. It's uh, three, three wires in here. It might be a little tight, but it's just a rubber on the metal. That's the way they sit. Okay, so we removed the wires from the holders in here. The next one, that would be this purge valve. So you just press those things in here and move it forward out of the way. That's the last thing that connected to air filter box, as I remember. And Next thing you just pull it up. It should be four. Now we have this uh, you come over here. This uh, vacuum line, just standard BMW hose, squeeze and remove. Or uh, use this screwdriver on the sides. box out okay so the next thing we're gonna do is remove this uh, air intake and um, there should be two clamps one in here the second one is right here but it's like it should face up not down I assume someone has uh, removed it before and there is this clamp right here that's facing up so you can basically remove it from here or just uh, move this one a little bit this is a six millimeter wrench like I disconnected one so I can easily uh, disconnect the other one right now or using a screwdriver or a six, six millimeter and uh, just remove this whole thing like and you see it's not tight I haven't moved it yet at all so let me see if I can no but anyways it's possible to do you're not damaging anything Go, move it here. Oh yeah, I see the clamp is bigger here, not six millimeters. So it definitely has been not original one. And 
just take this out of the way. Okay, next one we'll remove this one. Let's uh, have a long screwdriver here. The clamp is facing up. So just uh, take your time. Shouldn't be hard. Twist and remove. Um, the next thing, um, I'm gonna take this thing off, so just slide it and lift and remove all the wires from here because we will need to take this one bolt here. It's a 6.5 millimeter Allen as I remember, I use Torx 30 for those bolts all the time, so simple like that. And uh, now there is um, another one right down here. Like if you can see it, probably not, but it's another six, uh, five millimeter Allen right down there. So we'll remove that and take this one out of the way because nothing else holds it as you can see. So that's it. Okay, the next thing, um, let me remove this bar. It's, uh, there's two different bolt sizes it's 15 millimeter here and 16 millimeter here as you can see I got 15 and 16 16 goes in here and 15 goes in here so we're gonna remove that because in order to move the valve cover we'll need that out of the way uh, and the next uh, remember the battery is disconnected so we're gonna remove the high pressure fuel lines from here it's a 14 millimeters and I think you're gonna move this uh, fuel rail out of the way as well because it's gonna be easier that way okay so right now I'm gonna remove everything that's on the way so it's like let's start with this one um, there's a wire connected in there just like we don't need that i'm gonna remove those o2 sensor connectors just twist them on the side all the wiring and everything like um, just to let it free disconnect that it's a uh, oil pressure sensor so it's like everything just lose everything make everything free and now we're gonna remove the coils as you probably know it's like they're going like that they're pretty tough like the car has 116,000 miles so just help with the screwdriver here you go and that's what I usually do just straight up that's it that's all you need same goes in here on every one of them as you can see like if we take a closer look like uh, all the coils on the bottom have a little oil and the valve cover gasket is leaking pretty bad if you look around like you can see a lot of spots in here where it's leaking but every single coil will have this and yeah that, like the oil wells inside I can see they have not much but a little bit of oil every one of them and we'll show you later on why part of the valve cover gasket okay and the last coil in here okay so this is out of the way we also have three eight millimeter nuts in here one two and three and we also have this uh, connectors for the fuel injectors which uh, you can simply remove with this tool so just squeeze it in here a little bit and push it up real simple to remove you don't even have to do the well usually just a little bit and you remove it and the next one will be 
uh, eight millimeter nuts and we basically can later on disconnect this whole wiring uh, block and just remove it just uh, let it be free as well as everything else also like uh, there's a boost pressure control solenoids in here like you can disconnect them as well one and the second one is right here so real simple both of them and the next thing i'll show you how to remove too is a uh, crankcase ventilation valve as usual this can answer one here and the other side is on the bottom over there so you have to feel it that's pretty much it okay the next thing we're gonna do is remove high pressure lines this one it's a 14 millimeter so just simply let it drain a little bit over there like I would use a disconnect from the top first and then from the bottom the other one is uh, 17 millimeter so this one is uh, 17 those 14s is 17 and uh, let it drain a little bit so when you disconnect it from the fuel injector it doesn't like go much down but there's nothing in there anyways so just let it be for a bit and then remove them completely removing the this lines high pressure lines just uh, remove and put them somewhere in a proper order so it, later on we'll need to move those wires so as you can see they can be moved all the way here so nothing on the way and uh, then remove this whole thing in order to remove this uh, wiring harness we have uh, two 10 millimeter bolts one right here you can see it and the other one is on the other side I don't know if you can see it from here but I have pointed with a wrench a bit hard but not too hard so it's on it's right there it's free so the other thing I'm thinking about like uh, I'm just gonna remove the <coughs> four Torx 25 volts from here just to free this up as well now I'm gonna remove the topper upper part of the wiring harness and uh, if you look here closer it's like this connectors in here one two and three and from the other side is as well one two and three in here so you just squeeze your screwdriver in there and press a little bit top it off on the other side that's how it goes this way we can move out of the valve cover and it makes it easier for this one to be moved out of the way as well okay the next thing i'm going to disconnect the crankcase ventilation valve hose um, the way I do it is just put your screwdriver where it sits, hold it here, move the wires out of the way and put the screwdriver on the bottom a little bit and that's it, it snaps. It's a real easy way to do it. Don't put too much force in it, don't break this connector, it's important. The other side of this hose goes down goes down there and um, you'll just have to reach squeeze it and remove it so the last wire we had to remove is this one exactly the same one as for the injectors but uh, the biggest difficulty is it's located way down there so you have to just fill it and uh, what I did I was just laying in here and using my both hands one with the 
with a pick tool so I can put it in, uh, in there and just the other one pulling it out. So now we can move this out of the way and we have a good and clear access to all the bolts. The only other thing, I'm going to remove this fuel rail a little bit because it's going to be on the way when we're moving the valve cover off. So this fuel rail is, uh, as I remember, four 11 millimeter bolts. Yeah, they're right here. And uh, I already removed this one, so I'll just take it out. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is remove all the Torx tan bolts, all the perimeter. I'll show you the hard ones in the back, how to deal with them. Inside it is like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Torx uh, E10 bolts, and uh, we also still have this uh, three long 10 millimeter ones. So don't forget about those. I also loosen up those uh, bolts that holding the bracket for the fuel injectors because we just need them to move a little bit out of the way no need to remove it completely just loosen it up a bit and uh, right now I'm gonna remove the four bolts in the back like one here uh, one right here the other one is right there and the bottom one so I'm gonna use this uh, extension and small ratchet E10 socket and it's gonna Keep nice in the back. I loosen it. Works really good in the middle. Okay. And in the back. Yeah. So this extension and this small ratchet works just fine for the whole four bolts in the back. We need a 10 millimeter just like that. You can find it in Harbor Freight anywhere. And it goes completely all the way, almost all the way. So you see it's not like uh, there yet. But those bolts are usually not tight at all. So I can remove it and then it's just hand tight. That's it, real easy. But I use the big ratchet. So you push firmly and then you move it. That's it. So now everything is removed. We have a almost clear way to remove the valve cover. The only obstacle is this uh, turbocharger pipe, but it moves a little bit, so no big deal. I think it's, it's gonna go up and we remove it. This valve cover is very tight, so it's 116,000 miles, and I'm pretty sure it's original one. So no wonder it's like really brittle right now and uh, we're gonna use as usual like uh, a screwdriver a little bit just to see push it under the the gasket as you see it so but push it like slightly so don't let it like go crazy and move it a little bit that's all you got to do like slightly work your way like all around the edges and eventually it's gonna come out Okay, so we worked the way around it and now we're ready to remove it. Okay, it sits tight. And I don't see a way to remove it other than just from here. Like, because this uh, aluminum spark plug tubes they are on the way for the valve cover to be moved to the side so we have to lift it further and we have this uh, turbocharger pipe in here on the way so we have to clear the clear the way to the side Just 
work your way around it like uh, here's uh, the first two just one by one remove them like uh, wiggle it from side to side and it will clear the way for the valve cover to go this way so it doesn't have to come up further on top and um, it's just like technically finger work just <coughs> little by little Alright, so we removed the, the valve cover and the main advice is to remove this, um, this metal spark plug tubes and the hardest one is the back one. This is where the valve cover is usually stuck. It's always like that, the uh, two in the back, like just uh, work your way around it. There is no other way, maybe there is another way, but this one definitely the simplest and you don't have to remove anything else like this is fine like uh, the turbocharger pipe is fine everything else is fine so everything we removed that's all that needed and we just uh, once you remove those two last ones and uh, the rest of course you'll be able to lift it a little bit higher and move it out of the way that's it and uh, as you can see like, uh, Here's the reasons why we're replacing the valve cover gasket. It's like it's all cracking. You can even hear it like uh, everywhere. It's cracking everywhere. So we're gonna, here's the, here's the valve cover itself. We're gonna apply a little bit of silicone like uh, on the top corner. So it's in the back, like a little drops. Remember drops and don't put a lot of silicone because you will need those drops of silicone to just hold the valve cover in place and also it's a good idea to spray it with the carburetor cleaner first like uh, on the grooves all of the grooves let it uh, dry a little bit and after that only put some silicone okay guys so we clean it all out place the spark plugs in the process Simple thing to do. Uh, they were original, so right now we're gonna install back the valve cover, and after that we will install the spark plug tubes, these guys, in there. In order to do so, uh, this is the way to hold your valve cover, right here in the middle. there in the back holding the wires and everything make sure your gasket stays in place just work uh, around the fuel injectors and that's pretty much all you need to do Gasket for the hand. Now just push it down. That feels good, I can tell you that. But for you, and I will check also, you just uh, lift, let's say. Uh, every corner just like that and fill your gasket if it's there if it sits flat like how it goes you go in here well you, you actually can see there but you can feel it also and everywhere in the middle like because this is very important just check this corner 
the, the back one near turbocharger pipe like uh, this is the most common where it can fail okay guys so all the board bolts torqued down uh, this is the, the major thing like uh, the rest is simple you just uh, put those guys in there and let them be and the next thing we're gonna do is you know just put the fuel rail back in and well the hardest will be this wire again which goes all the way down there but other than that it's uh, pretty much done and all we need to do is just connect everything back you can't mess it out like it's uh, all electrical goes where exactly it's supposed to go and that's pretty much it thanks for me so the fuel rail goes in and the first thing I do is to put this 17 millimeter in there that's it it's like all the way down hand tight and just put the bolts in it's uh, 11 millimeters may I remind you you can put them hand tight all of them and then torque them down guys so fuel rail is in place um, now I'll go and install this wire it's exactly the way it's supposed to be as you see right here like there's a little pin where it goes so it goes this way it goes kind of like that in there but uh, for that I would say I will have to remove my gloves completely and just like there is no way I can show you that just feel it like there is like only one spot where it can go and uh, putting it back is way simpler than removing it so just take your time be patient and you can make it happen so the wires are on the other one in here is this one for the fuel rail and it literally takes five minutes to install like even less like to this hard one uh, so removing it's way harder so right now we just uh, plug it back like this thing in here and you remember it's two 10 millimeter bolts um, then connect those guys right here it's uh, solenoids for turbo boost and the next thing we're gonna do is put this one in but after that like not connecting anything yet just put it back and then we're gonna connect those uh, high pressure fuel lines millimeter it goes nice and easy and we already pushed uh, in this second set of uh, wiring like uh, you can't mess it up so remember like this goes in the first one Um, then there is a 8 millimeter here, 8 millimeter nut, and this is for the coil, coil, like uh, everything in a specific order so you can't mess it up, like if it doesn't feel right going in there, it probably shouldn't, so it's all very simple. That's how you do it. And the last one is here. Okay, after we did all this, like uh, the only thing we need to do is make them 
and tight. It's a 14 millimeter. Don't go crazy, but don't go too soft. Better follow the torque specs if you are not comfortable doing it. After that, we're gonna put this hose back in. You just snap it in there. Just need to find where. And push it till you hear it's click. And do the same in here. After that, like uh, all you need to follow is just those um, eight millimeter nuts, three of those, and ignition coils. What are we gonna do next, in the next video? It's replacing oil filter housing gasket. So I'm not gonna put everything back exactly where it's supposed to be, but it's pretty simple and straightforward so you can, guys can figure it out on your own. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.